Although the sudden decline in the disease was unexpected, the townspeople did not hurry to celebrate. The preceding months through that they had increased their desire for liberation had also taught them that the prudence of the accustomed them to the countless and less on the rapid end of the epidemic. However, this new development was the subject in every conversation, and in the depths of people's hearts, there was great admitted hope. All else was secondary. The new victims of the plague counted for little besides the outstanding facts that figures they were going down. On the signs that the return to the time of good health was secretly expected, though no one admitted the fact. Was that from this moment on people readily spoke the apparent indifference about how life would be recognized after the plague. Everyone agreed that the amenities of former times would not be restored overnight and that it was easier to destroy than it was to rebuild. They considered merely that the food supplies might be somewhat improved and that in the way people were relieved of their most intimate worries. But in reality, behind the harmless remarks and the wild hope was also raging to such an extent that the townspeople would sometimes become aware of it and then hastily to stare that it was in any event deliverance would not be coming in a few days. And in truth, the plague did not end in a few days, but it did appear to be weakening faster than one could re reasonably hope. And in the first days of January, the cold set in the unaccustomed presence and seemed to crystallize above the town, yet the sky had never been so blue. For whole days on end, the immutable and icy splendor bathed our town with an uninterrupted light. And this purified air, the plague was so successive falls over the three weeks and seems to be playing itself out for in the smaller and smaller lines of corpses that it proceeded. In a short space of time, it lost almost all its strength and had it had taken months to build up. When one saw it miss clearly disintegrate prey, such as grand or reused young woman, get worse with the districts of two or three days while it vanished entirely from others, increase the numbers of the victims on Monday, and then on Wednesday let almost all of them escape, seeing it in a way slip back exhausted for a rush forward. One could have thought that it was falling apart, the weirderness and the irritation, and that it was losing not only its control over itself, but its seventy mathematical efficiency and it that had been a strength. Castile serum suddenly achieved a string of successes it had not been previously able to achieve. All the measures taken by the doctors who had previously provided that no beneficial results seemed suddenly to be effective. It appeared that the plague in its turn had been tricked and that it is suddenly weakness had given strength to the previously blunt weapons used against it. From time to time, through, though the disease sufficient and in a sort of blind thirst carried off three or four patients who were expected to recover, these were the unfortunates of the plague, these whom it killed when hope was high. This was the case of Judge Othone, who had to be evacuated from the quarantine camp and Teru said that of him that he had any luck, though no one could tell if he was thinking that there was examining magistrate's life or his death. But on the whole, the infection was proceeding all along the line of the communities, from the prefecture who was first given rise to some timid and secret hope, eventually confirmed that the public that the conviction and the victory was one and that the disease was abandoning its position. In reality, it was hard to decide whether 
this was a victory or not. All one could do was to observe the sickness seemed to be going as it had arrived. Strangely, because used against, it had not changed. It had been ineffective yesterday. And now it was apparently successful. One merely had the feeling that the disease had exhausted itself, or perhaps that it had retired after achieving all its objectives. In a sense, its role was complete. Now, or nonetheless, one could have said that nothing had changed in the town. The streets still silent by day and invited in the evenings by the same crowd that predominantly in overcoats and scarves. The cinemas and cafes did the same amount of business, but one would look more closely. One saw that the faces were more relaxed and occasionally smiled. And this brought home the fact that before this no one used to smile in the streets. In truth, a rent it had just appeared in the Opeg Vale and had the m many months surrounded the town. And every Monday everybody would gather from the radio's new bul bulletins and gasp at getting wider and then they would finally be able to breathe. The consolation was still that only negative one and no practical consequences. But where is they precisely people would have learned with some incredibly that the train had left or the boats arrived or even that the cars were once more going to be allowed to drive around. The announcements of these events in mid-January would not have caused any surprise. No doubt it was not much, but the slight difference in fact reflected that the vast difference distance that our townspeople had moved in the direction of hope and that you could say that as soon as it became possible for people to have the tiniest scrape of hope the evidence reigned of the plague was over the fact remains however that throughout the month of january our fellow citizens reacted in conductory ways veering from excitement to depression so new attempts to escape were recorded. In the very moment when the statistics were most favorable, the authorities were very surprised by this. As the census reports apparently since most of the escape succeeded. But in point of fact, these who escaped at the moment obeyed natural feelings. In some people, the plague had embedded such deep skepticism that they could not get rid of it. So there were no longer anywhere for hope to attach itself in them. Even now, when the time of the plague had passed, they continued to live according to its rules. Events had overtaken them and others, however, and these were the founded especially amongst those who had until then lived apart from those they loved. After the long period of confinement and despondency, the rising winds of hope lift their fever and impatience which deprive them from all control over themselves. In a sort of panic, seize them from the ideas that they might perhaps die so close to the end, they would not see the person they adored and that they would be no reward for the long period of suffering. For months they had persisted in waiting and self-affecting tendencies, despite prison and exile, and now the first sight of hope was enough to destroy what fear and despair had managed to dent. They dashed off like madmen in the beat of the plague, unable to follow the progress down to the final moments. At the same time, though, spontaneous signs of optimism appeared. For one thing, there were marked fall in the prices and that the strictly economic point of view. It was impossible to explain. That same problems remained. The quarantine rules were still applied and all the gates and food supplies were certainly not improved. So we were witnessing a strategically non-marginal phenomenon. As though the retreated of the plague had repercussions everywhere. And at the same time, the optimism spread to those who previously lived in groups 
and those who had forced by the disease to separate. And two religious houses in the town began to reform the communal life and able to resume. The same applied to the military who had once more gathered in the barracks that had been left empty and went back to their normal lives as the garrison. In the small event of the great symbolic significance, the population lived in the secret turmoil until January 25th. In the weeks, the figures fell so low that the consolidating the medical commissions, the prefecture announced the epidemic could be considered under control. Admittedly, the communique added that the spirit of the caution in the population could not fail to applaud. The gates of the town would remain closed for two more weeks, and the stationary measures continued for months. During the period, the slightest indication of the plague might resume, and the status quo would maintain the necessary measures to control for the long as necessary. However, everyone was animous in considering that these previous for the more formality, and to the evening of January 25th, the town was filled with joy and excitement. To contribute to the general mood of the celebration of the prefect gave the order to put the town lights as the pre-plague times. Beneath the cold, clear sky, the townspeople spilled out into a more brightly lit street in the noisy, laughing groups. Admittedly, in these many hours, the shutters remained closed and the families spent the evenings in silence while others were filling it with a noisy celebration. However, for many of these mourners, there were also profound relief, either because the fear of seeing other relatives carried off was finally appeased, or else because the feeling of their own personal preservation was more acute. But the families in which to remain least touched by the general joy were undoubtedly those who at the very moment of the patient fighting against the plague in the hospital, and who in the quarantine centers or in those their own homes were waiting for the pestilence to truly be done with them, as it was now finished with others. Certainly these people had hopes, but they stored them up for the kept them in reserve, refusing to draw on them before they had really had the right to do so. And in this waiting, the silent watch somewhat between agony and joy seemed to be more cruel still than the midst of the general rejoicing. But these exceptions did not at all det detract from the satisfaction from the rest. Of course, the plague was not yet over, and it would prove as much. Yet everyone's mind, weeks before the real event, trains were whistling as they left and ended tracks, and ships prolonged the shunning sheer seas. In fallen days, spirits would be claimed and doubts returned, but the moments the whole town shook, bursting out in those enclosed spaces, dark and motionless, it was which it had put doors and roots in the stones and finally began to move, with its loads of survivors, that evening Taru and Ryu, Robert and the rest, walked in the midst of the crowds, and they too felt the threading in the air. And long after leaving, the beloved Teru and Ryu could still hear the sounds of happiness following them. At the same time they deserted side streets, they walked past windows and clo with closed shutters, and precisely because their tiredness, they could not separate the suffering that continued behind the shutters from the joy that filled the streets, only the short distance away. The coming deliverance of the two-faced combination of laughter and tears. At the same time, when the noise grew louder and more joyful, Teru stopped. The shape was running lightly across the dark streets. It was a cat, the first one that had been seen since spring, and stopped for a moment in the middle of the road. Hesitating, licked its paw, quickly passed it across the right ear, and carried on its silent way and vanished into the night. Tru smiled. The little old man, too, would be happy. However, at that moment when the plague seemed to be moving away to return to the unknown lair from which it silently emerged, there was at least one person in the town who did not throw in the state of conservation in the departure, namely Kotar, who, if one is to believe Tru's notebooks, at 
As it happens, these notebooks became quite particular from the time when the figures started to fall. Perhaps because the tiredness of writing became hard to read, and the writer hopped too often from one subject to another. Moreover, for the time, the notebooks abandoned objectivity and make way for more personal considerations. Consequently, in these midst of the quite long passages that the case of Qatar, one finds little report of the old man and the cats. According to Teru, the plague had done nothing to diminish his respect for the character, who interested him no less than the epidemic, and he had done before, but unfortunately he could not continue to interest him. Even though his Teru goodwill was no doubt because he had tried to see him again. A few days after the evening of January 25th, he had stationed himself in the corner of the little street. The cats were there, as appointed, warming themselves in the patches of the sun. But at the usual time, the shutters remained absurdly closed. Over the following d- days, Teru never saw them open again. Oddly, he detected that the old man was either annoyed or dead and that if he was annoyed that he thought he was at the right and that the plague had done him wrong. But if he was dead, then one must wonder, as one did with the old asthmatic, whether he was a saint. True did not think so, but he considered that there was, in the case of the old man, a sign, perhaps a notebook observed. One could only conclude that the approximation of the sainthood. And in the case, we shall just have to be the content with the form of the modest and charitable sentencim. Still mixed with the observation of about Qatar, one also finds in the notebook that many remarks often scattered, some which concerned Grand, who was now convalescent and was gone back to his work through nothing that happened and others among them referred to Dr. Ryu's mother. The few conversations that Teru had had with her whilst living under the same roof, the attitudes of the old woman, her smile, her view of the plague, and the scrupulously noted down. More, most of all, Teru emphasized that Miam Ryu's resistance, her habits of expressing everything in simple sentences, the particular affection which she showed for one particular window overlooking the quiet streets behind which she would sit in the evening quite upright, her hands rest on her eyes alert until dusk entered the room and turned her into a black shadow in the gray light that gradually spread across her, dissolving the motionless silhouette. She noted, too, that the lightness of her step as she went from one room to the other. She, her goodness of which she had never given any actual proof to Teru, but which shone through everything she did or said, and finally on the fact that according to him she knew everything without thinking about it, and with so much silence and shadow she could withstand any light, including the light that of the plague. Here Teru, writing, gave particular signs of failing. The lines followed were hard to read, and though to give no, new proof to the weakness of the last words, the first were personal. My mother was like that. I like the same self affectment in her, and she is to one I always wanted to be with. Eight years ago, I cannot say that she died. She simply faded away a little more than usual, and when I turned around, she was no longer there. But we must return to Kotar. Since the figures have started to fall, he made several visits to Ryu on various pretexts, but when it came down to it, he wanted each time to ask Ryu for his predictions about the development of the epidemic. Do you think it can stop just like that, suddenly without warning? He was skeptical on the point, or at least the cl- claim to be. But the farther question was he asked seemed to indicate less solid convictions. In the mid-January, Ryu had answered quite optimistically, and that every occasion these replies, instead of filling Qatar with joy, had produced reactions that varied from day to day, but in the range of bad temper to depression. Subsequently, the doctor came to say that despite the favorable signs,
in the statistics, it would be better not to claim victory yet. In other words, Kotar said, we do not know anything. It might resume from one day to the next. Yes, just as it is possible that the numbers of the cured will increase. This uncertainty, which everyone found disturbing, had visibly been a relief to Qatar. In front of Teru, who had engaged in conversations with the shopkeepers in the area, in which he tried to spread Rayu's opinion. Admittedly, he had no difference in doing so, but after the thrill of victories, doubt had returned to many minds, and the survived had excitement caused the de declaration from the prefecture. Qatar was reassured by the sight of the anxiety. But at other times, he was downcast. Yes, he told Teru. They will open the gates eventually, and you'll see. They'll drop. They'll all drop me. Up to January 25th, everyone noticed that the instability of his character. For whole days on end, after having for so long tried to get on good terms with acquaintances and neighbors, he openly quarreled with them. And at least... at in appearance, he retired from the world and from one day to the next started to live like wild animals. He no longer appeared in restaurants, at the theaters, or his favorite cafes. Yet you seemed unable to resume the sensible, obscure life that he had led before the epidemic. He lived completely shut up in his apartment and had his meals sent up from a nearby restaurant. Only in the evenings did he make frivolous stories to buy in which he needed to emerge from the shops and hurry down the streets. If Tru should meet him on such occasions, he would only get monosyllable about, out of him. And then without any period of transactions, he became social again, without talking visibly about the plague, asking everyone their opinion, and happily returning every evening into the crowd. On the day of the declaration from the authorities, Kotar completely vanished from circulation. Two days later, Teru met him wandering through the streets. Kotar asked him to walk as far to the outskirts of town with him. Teru hesitated, feeling unusually tired after his day of work. But the other man insisted, and he seemed very excited, gesturing wildly and speaking quickly in a very loud voice. He asked his companion what he thought of the declaration the prefecture really marked the end of the plague. Of course, Teru considered that an administration declaration was no, not in itself enough to halt the pestilence, but that one could now reasonably believe that the epidemic was going to end unless something unforeseen happened.